Hey everyone, uh, in this video we're going to take a look at the bits power prototype blocks for the RTX 5090s. Uh, these two are going to be for the TUF right here and the Astral right here. Uh, you'll notice right away that they look very rough. Uh, these are prototypes, so they're not finished products and obviously therefore they're not going to have um, kind of that complete fit and finish look that you're going to expect. However, um, the inside cooling plate is pretty much finalized. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in this video is making sure that they fit correctly. And on top of that, we're going to do some temperature testing compared to air. Um, and we'll see, you know, how they perform. Uh, but quickly, I want to go over the general design. Uh, you'll notice right away that this one has a different cut bracket. This is for the tough. On the final version, uh, they will all have this kind of square bracket and not this kind of angular cut that you see here. Um, but I want to quickly talk about the block design. Uh, as you've, for some of you that are, have been familiar with Bits Power products, you'll notice that this is quite different. Uh, first of all, you have removable cover. This is not something you had with the previous Bits Power blocks. Uh, that is introduced with this generation. Oh, this is one piece of aluminum. Uh, as you can see, that there's magnetic, um, magnetic uh, magnets here obviously, for certain screw points that you can just attach. And if you look around the block, you'll notice that it's been pocketed very uh, detailed so that it sits extremely well and very flush, right? There's no gaps or anything like that. Uh, these covers um, will come in bl anodized black. This is just raw aluminum, so don't, don't expect anything fancy looking on this. I am suggesting a silver. Uh, I don't know if you guys would prefer chrome or something more matte. Uh, preferably both. So if you have any feedback on what you would like to see, put it in the comments. So therefore I can let them know. Uh, obviously you can see that this is spacing for the BizPower logo. With probably the magnetic one is going to go here. Um, but yes, it's going to be a square for all of them. Okay, so moving on to the block itself. Um, you'll notice that we now have a core design. Right. Uh, previous bits power blocks. I have a used one here. Uh, it's still GPU attached, so don't mind the the coolant thing here. Uh, this one I pulled out of that sub build I did recently. Uh, you'll notice that this has the cold plate for the GPU and everything just all in one. Right. It's kind of like the EK design. Uh, but now they're moving on to a dedicated core design, very much similar to something from Optimus, something from uh, what was that? Heat killer, right? So we'll take the back plate off. Uh, we'll just take a look here. Uh, mind you, this back plate has these four holes here. This is not final. On the final one, you will not have the holes. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to take the back plate off and then we're going to take a look at the uh, design underneath real quick. All right. So these are using the same M2 screws that they used on the previous blocks, I believe. Um, once you remove these, I kind of wish that they would have this kind of more flush mounted. Uh, I, I personally don't like the bumped up look, um, but I, I think you would need a thicker aluminum plate to do kind of a, a countersunk, or, and it might be a smaller screw. And these screws are fairly soft. Uh, that's another thing that I'm, they are aware of. Uh, I kind of wish to, um, I guess down the line, they may improve these screws to be less soft. And let's see. So once you take these off, I don't have instructions, obviously, since this is a prototype. Right, but from what I'm gathering is you will use these screws, similar like the 40 series block I have over there, and you will use the existing uh, four screws from the GPU on the cold plate retention bracket to then install the rest of the block. All right, so just let me take these out. That top. Okay, so when I remove the back plate, you'll see that it's going to come with pads pre-applied, just like last generation. Uh, this obviously will come in black, anodized black. This is a raw aluminum sheet, as you can probably tell. Um, so don't expect that, obviously, on the final product. Uh, but let's see. So here, obviously, this will be nickel-plated. It's not going to be bare copper like this. Um, although, if you guys want bare copper, we can suggest it, right? Um, but... So you see that all the pads are pre-applied, but here you can see that this is a cold plate design that's different than what they used to do. Uh, from my understanding, and when I took it out, this is pretty much the same cold plate um, that they're using on the latest CPU blocks from Bits Power. So I'm eager to see the improvement this brings. Uh, from what I understand, they were trying to do this previously for the fourth generation, and it didn't happen. Uh, also, the terminal is going to remain the same. 
Um, I, I do kind of wish they would change the look of the terminal. It's not as attractive as I think it can be. But with that said, uh, let's just move the block aside. And then we'll start uh, first tackling the Astral. There are more coming. Uh, the Founders Edition is in progress. And there's also a trio. Uh, I may get the trio uh, soonish. Uh, if I get the trio block, I will test it on the trio. I do have a trio. So we're going to start with the Astral. This is the 4090 Astral. Uh, those of you should... Oh, sorry, 5090 Astral. It's going to take a while for me to get used to saying that. Um, but uh, I've never taken this card apart. But following most of Seuss procedures for removing their GPUs, I think I can figure it out. Okay, so this is going to be the Astral Disassembly. Uh, for those of you wondering, the... The sticker here, that is not a warranty sticker, okay? That is just a sticker to show that whether you took it apart or not. So taking this apart is not going to void your warranty unless you physically damage something. Uh, so as with all things, when you're taking something apart, be very careful. A couple Phillips heads here, so we're going to get started here. I'm going to start by removing the corner. Uh, preferably keep your screws somewhere safe when you do these things. So typically there's... A row of screws for the back plate, two here. These six typically hold down the GPU. Well, this is a really big screw. Uh, these four screws typically, I mean, six are the ones that hold the cooler down the most. Um, but like I said, this is my first time taking one of these apart. And we will just go by, play it by year. So we're gonna remove these. Okay, that's too small. All right. Um, in terms of blocking and Astral, it seems like every water block company started with the Astral first, as well as the Founders Edition. Um, how much is worth blocking an Astral is really hard to say. Um, I, you know, I've used this, I have more than one, but this is one I've been using because uh, I, 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 I know how this one performs, so that's why I'm using this one. Um, but generally speaking, I don't see the... I mean, if you bought this cooler, you probably bought it for the look because the premium is so high that you may not want to water block it. But if you're wondering why uh, a lot of water cooling places kind of started with this GPU, is because this is kind of the GPU they got first, right? It's not because, you know, um, they want it. They feel that people who spend such a high premium is going to go ahead straight away and block it. All right, so... But you know what, before I take this completely apart, I just want to show you guys real quick. Um, since it's going to be a separate video, this is the tough, right? You can see that the cooler is much more substantial on the Astral, right? In terms of actual cooling performance, uh, it's just a couple of degrees. It's not much, it's not a huge difference. And both of these, um, both of these GPUs are 24 phase. So you're not exactly getting a, you know, a better power delivery setup on the Astral either. Well, outside of the monitoring here. Uh, so let's see. Hold on, guys. Oh, it's already coming off. All right. So I guess there's less screws than I expected. Oh. Okay. So I was expecting screws here. I couldn't see from that angle. But you can see that typically we have screws along the side here. Right. So it seems like it's probably going to be the bracket here. And somewhere along the front, maybe, it's holding it down. I'm used to having some screws in the front hold it down here. Most likely it's going to be these two. This is not uncommon. I'm definitely going to take some time to clean. No, it's probably not this one. This one going through? This one is not going through. So we're going to be going through this one. This one might be cutting, cutting into the cooler. Okay. Actually, it looks kind of short. Uh, from my angle, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, yeah, it looks like that one is touching the cooler. And this one, just in case it may be touching the cooler, I'm just going to remove it as well. So I've removed the, these three over here. Okay. So now let's remove the cold plate. And see, it's already starting to come off. I think the front bracket would have came off at this point. Yep, the front fan shroud is off. It's just four corners for that. Obviously, when you're doing this, you want to be very wary of the fan cables you have here. You don't need to do this to remove the GPU, obviously. But, um, just let me... You know what? Just let me remove it for the sake of this video. 
Okay, be careful when you're doing this. Do not pull too hard. So there we have the fan shroud. Um, this shroud, as I was speaking in my previous video about the 5080 Astral, you can see that this is a solid aluminum core, right, from one piece. And then here you have another aluminum inserted piece in here. So you guys can see how this is uh, put together. These look to be the same fans as the 40 series, the axle fans. Um, so technically, you could take these fans out. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think you can, might be able to swap these fans for the 40 series ones, like the white ones, for example. I'll give it a shot. I do have them. Um, so if you wanted to customize this cooler, you could. Uh, you could definitely, well, you would probably have to mask this part. I think this part is, nope, that part is also screwed on. So you can completely disassemble it. None of it is screwed. Uh, you can, this obviously is going to be glued on, right? Uh, you can obviously kind of take this apart, then paint this, and then paint this, and you have a unique look, uh, which is something I'm going to be doing. I just don't want to do it to my own, because <laughs> I don't want to totally kill my warranty on something that's fairly expensive. Uh, my personal cards, I, I tend to try to not to void, void the warranty on them, uh, simply because, you know, I mean, I do do it for, like, slightly cheaper cards, but this one is a little bit on the higher end, so I... We'll try to keep it as nice as possible. And here we go. All right. So here we have the card. And I believe this fan is going to be still connected. So we're going to be super careful about taking that off. All right. Okay, guys, I apologize if you can't see it well on camera because I'm trying to be as careful as possible. I'm uh, trying not to break something. I wonder why the back plate has not come off yet. Normally at this point, I expect the back plate to come off. Unless the back plate is still attached. Hmm. At least the cooler should be coming off at this point. Let's see. I hear it. I hear it's coming loose, but I don't want to pry at it. You never want to pry at it. With those excessive force. Oh, there we go. Okay, so here comes the cooler off. You can see some of the pads are still stuck. I'm gonna have to relocate those pads, obviously, because of the water block. Um, but you can see the contact is actually very nice on the paste. So I've transferred the pads over because I'm gonna have to put the stock cooler back on um, until I guess I won't be really using uh, a steady water block until maybe whatever this one, Thermo Grizzly, whatever is available first uh, that I matches the aesthetic of the build I do plan on doing. Uh, I do plan on doing um, a dual 5090 Astral build. If you're wondering, SI is dead, yes, SI is dead. But for my use case, for some AI workloads, two 5090s work just fine, okay? They work together, and you can pull the memory together, etc. Um, so here we go. Uh, you can see the back plate is actually attached by the screws here. Uh, one thing I do want to point out real quick is that you'll notice that these pads, while I did not the world's best job in transferring back over, you see that they're exactly cut to size and the cooler is actually, you know, kind of pronounced exactly where the memory chips are, right? This is not something that you see on the previous generation or many other coolers where it's just one flat piece, one flat strip, uh, and that's it. So I'm curious to see if that is going to be replicated on the Tough or not. Um, so that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, obviously, that is an attention to detail that uh, if you're just looking at the GPU on a picture, on a box, on a price point, you're not going to see. Um, I'm not going to really, I mean, prices for these cards in general have gotten fairly ridiculous. Um, but uh, that some of, the, you know, I'm not going to go into politics here, but, you know, the, 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 some of that really is, you know, people like to say it's, oh, it's just uh, company greed. Well, you know, when you, these things, I don't think you guys are realize, I mentioned before, these things are made in China. They're not, just because a chip is made in Taiwan doesn't mean the card itself is assembled in Taiwan, right? They are made in China. Uh, some of the cards are made in Vietnam, uh, the lower end, which is now also, you know, has tariff imposed. So, you know, as a, as a reflection, we're, we're going to see that in the pricing, Okay. Um, while we, hopefully the 100% tariff, 154 or whatever, is not part of these kind of devices and these do get excluded. Otherwise, they are literally unsellable. 
right? I mean, you have people that are willing to overpay for cards, but no one's going to want to pay, what, six grand for this? It's not going to happen. Um, although it's definitely someone has already, but that's a whole other story. So with those screws removed, I see one more. I think this will free the GPU from the back plate. Obviously, we're gonna, at this point, we're going to disconnect the fan here. Um, so once again, this... Yes, uh, one more thing while I'm working on this card here. Uh, I saw the Bowers video about fan noise and something about the rear fan. Um, I have two 5090 Astrals and f up to, well, I only have three now, but I have three 5080 Astrals, so I have five, and they all use the same cooler. I do not have that issue on mine, uh, maybe because he got an early batch, like the, uh, not the early batch, but the launch, at launch, there was a batch for press. And that's what he kind of received. I don't know if by the time I got mine, because I got mine well into the second batch, but my first 5080s were from that initial launch batch. Um, and I don't have any of those issues. So, I mean, I did hear someone else having some fan issues, uh, but personally, I have not experienced them. So I'm not going to say that they doesn't exist, but I'm not going to say based off one card that it is a well-known problem, right? I think that's fair. Right. If your sample has it, I'm not denying that your sample may have it. But at the same time, just because your sample has it doesn't mean everybody's sample has it. And speaking of that, you'll notice that this is very well padded on the rear. This is another thing I brought up in my 5080 video, Astro video. A lot of these manufacturers for these cards, when you start seeing me take the trios apart, um, when that block comes in, and if I take the Zotac 5090 apart, which I also do have, uh, you'll notice that these things don't exist Okay, there's just nothing. And while pads are cheap, the time to cut them, put them on, these are, I mean, things matter like this. And this is, once again, a solid piece of aluminum, All right? It's not thin either, as you can tell. This was the, at most, it was at this one point, it was this thick, and it's been machined down to this thin, All right? So these things all come into the money factor. Like I said, uh, in my previous video, you may not appreciate that, that's totally fine and legitimate, but you cannot take away from a product that has more machining and material cost simply because it's too expensive to you.